Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and this, as you might have guessed, is the Falcon 9 launch out of Vandenberg on Friday. I've had a ton of people asking me about this because, of course, rocket launches don't usually look like that. Or do they? So first up, this video here is from Doug Ellison, who you may remember was the guy that got me the tour of JPL and showed me uh, all the awesome behind-the-scenes stuff and narrated a couple of videos. This is from his drone. He's down, of course, in SoCal. And uh, yeah, he, it seems that he had the best view because not only did he uh, understand that a rocket launch was going to happen, but uh, he put a camera in place and got the whole event from start to finish. Now, the launch time of the Falcon 9 was at 5.27pm. It had a, an instantaneous window because they were trying to line it up with the required orbits for Iridium. Now, the launch time was really important because it meant that it launched in darkness, but as it got high enough, it would launch into the bright sun. So Vandenberg's about 160 miles to the west of the location, and a few seconds after launch, you can see the rocket and its trail. Now, the trail is darker than the sky behind it, so this is a an occlusion trail. It's basically blocking out the light, and that's how we're going to see it. But as the rocket gets higher up, the reverse is going to happen. The sky is going to be darker, and the rocket trail is going to be much brighter because it's going to be catching the sun, which is over the horizon, but as the trail's high enough, it can actually illuminate the trail directly. And there's also this nice moment where the trail goes dark, and that's presumably because there's a cloud layer uh, further out, which is blocking the sun, so the sun isn't illuminating this section of the trail. Anyway, as it gets higher up, a second thing is happening. The atmospheric pressure is dropping down, and that means that the rocket trail is starting to expand further and further. Now, if you go back to my video on rocket nozzle design... You'll remember that the rocket exhaust comes out at a specific pressure, and at sea level at launch, this pressure is generally lower than the atmospheric pressure. So you have an overexpanded nozzle, and the exhaust gets pinched down. As you go higher up, the pressure starts to match the exterior pressure, and as you get to very high altitudes, the nozzle becomes underexpanded, and the exhaust trail expands a great deal after leaving the engine. And of course, it's good to match the size of your exhaust nozzle to the ambient pressure outside. That's why the first stage of the Falcon rocket has nine engines with small engine bells, and the second stage has one engine with one very wide engine bell. It's much easier to actually see this uh, exhaust expansion happening if you look at old videos, specifically from uh, the East Coast where they have really good launch tracking cameras. This is obviously much faster than regular speed, but you can see how the exhaust is just expanding out into the atmosphere. Now, the lower atmosphere is also a bit more turbulent. You can see here there's actually a kink starting to form in the trail there. That's very common because uh, the winds are at different altitudes can be doing, going different directions. And frequently, rocket trails will take on a very erratic look minutes after launch. This is a daytime trail from a shuttle launch, and it does look like it's gone crazy, gone out of control. But paradoxically, if a rocket really did fly that erratically on launch, it would probably be terminated by the flight uh, abort system before it reached the altitude where the sun was able to illuminate it. The shuttle trail is much denser than the Falcon 9 because it has these uh, big uh, solid rocket boosters and they tend to produce a lot more smoke, a lot more particulate matter, whereas the Falcon 9 is using kerosene and liquid oxygen, so its main products are going to be carbon dioxide and water. Of course, you're going to get a lot of other chemicals, but uh, those are the main constituents. I gather that most of the visible trail is from the water freezing out and forming tiny ice crystals. Anyway, the next section of the video shows the staging, and you'll see that the trail is, again, still pretty rough at this point, but then it transitions to this much smoother uh, formation. And that's basically the transition between having nine engines all kind of competing with each other to a single engine, the one engine to rule them all. But I also want to zoom in to these little puffs that are happening in the trail. So what's happened is the rocket has staged. This is the first stage using its attitude control thrusters. And of course, these puffs of gas come out. They're not as high energy as the main exhaust because the main exhaust has a higher exhaust velocity. These little puffs are coming from cold gas attitude control thrusters, the basically a pressurized tank of gas that's allowed to expand through a nozzle. Now, some other SpaceX watchers got some better views, but this one is especially interesting because you can see the two fairings coming off, and they appear 
to be using some sort of reaction control thrusters to control their attitude. So, so while SpaceX weren't going to recover the booster in this particular case, it is clear that they're working on experiments to recover their fairings, and that might explain the new uh, Mr. Grabby Claw ship. Lots of speculation at this time, but a lot of people think that they're going to string a net between that and use it to soft land fairings. Because the fairings take a really long time to build and cost about $5 million each. You can actually get a pretty good idea of how big those payload fairings are because Elon, of course, posted this image of his Tesla Roadster getting ready to ride the Falcon Heavy. I think it's also worth mentioning that as we get into the upper atmosphere, the because the atmosphere gets so thin, uh, the engine trail becomes dominant, and so the turbulence of the atmosphere essentially goes away. We're high up there's a lot less difference in the air flows as there are lower down. So that's why the trail expands in such a clean, you know, clean manner. It shows this kind of fish head shape. Anyway, by this point in the launch, most people in LA were saying what the hell and calling 911 and talking about alien invasions. But, uh, I mean, yeah, look, the whole reason this is so visible is because it launched in the dark into the sunlight. And so you could see a lot of features which would normally be blocked by uh, the blue sky would normally overpower any of this detail, and if it launched uh, at night, it wouldn't be illuminated. So there is this short window of about half an hour before sunrise, half an hour after sunset, where lo rocket launches can look absolutely spectacular. And of course, it was launching south, so people in LA were seeing the complete trail side on. One last feature worth showing was the, uh, the booster basically coming back down to Earth. Even although there was no plan to recover the booster, they did perform a re-entry burn as usual, presumably doing their usual experiments to make sure that, uh, you know, things worked. As I understand it, there wasn't really the pressure to recover this booster because it's an older Block 4 design, and, uh, you know, the new hotness is coming in. They don't need any of that old and busted stuff. So yeah, thanks to Doug for his video, thanks to SpaceX for making an awesome launch, and I hope you can do this again in the future when I get a chance. I'm Scott Manley, fly safe.